Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. I hope you're all doing very well. So we did a pretty awesome mission uh, last night. It was called it was uh, it Trashes Caesar Search and Rescue Mission, basically. Um, the idea of it was to first first fly a ferry from over here. I can't remember, remember the airport, Sochi or something. We flew a hundred miles down to Batumi, landed at Batumi. Um, and then took off and did the mission. Uh, the mission was to attack a, well, primarily an FSB here, uh, which had some short range SAMs and other stuff like that. Also, also rescue this SEAL team here with helicopters. Also take out this SA6 Cub site here. Also attack this FOB site here. Also stop this convoy here all the time while defending from an SA-10 here and a bunch of red cap coming from here. <clears throat> so this is um, a complicated mission. This is one that Trash did for us rather than I do most of the missions. Um, the, the missions I do, are, I make them really simple basically uh, just because it suits our style, it's quick and it's easier to make a movie for all sorts of technical reasons that I won't go through. Uh, but every now and then we like to do a big fancy multifaceted chaotic mission like this. Uh, just, well, for fun really. Um, okay, so let me talk you through the flights and remind you. We had a seed flight of four aircraft. A A-10 Charlie, a, a three SU-25 so it was, okay. Um, now I won't, uh, um, well uh, we also had a flight of four times Harriers for ground attack. We had a flight of four times Hornet for cap. We had a flight of three Eagles and tail in some weird plane, I can't remember what, as cap as well. And a flight of two helicopters there, dub and trash, to go and rescue the SEAL team. And this is all going to happen at once. <clears throat> okay. Um, right, so I won't bother watching the ground attack teams because um, I'll, I'll just tell you what they did basically, it's going to be easier. And then we'll follow on here on camera what the cap teams did. Because I've and the reason I'm doing this is because I've, I have really no idea what actually happened during the mission. So I'm going to be as surprised as you guys are really. And this is just telling the story of what happened in the mission. Okay, so first there was the Harrier team. Uh, they were assigned to ground attack FOB and FSB and uh, maybe sidearm the SA6 if the... Uh, Frogfoots were failing to do that for some reason. Um, we lost our first guy in ferry. It's always a bit embarrassing when we lose our guys in ferry, but it happens sometimes. We, we're getting a lot of server lagging problems at the moment, so you're flying along one minute, and then the other minute you're basically you're lagged out and you've come back and you're literally inside another aeroplane and you blow up. Uh, and nothing we do about it. Uh, so we lost a Harrier on the way for the ferry, so one down, the other three made it back here. Uh, and those three uh, took off. I'm not sure where they are now. There they are. Atomic, static, gumbo. <clears throat> they flew this way. Uh, they attacked primarily FSB with Mavericks and GBUs from distance. The reason is they these guys had some... I can't remember the name. Oh, SA-8s, which are pretty decent. Opt can fire optically, electro-optically, and have about a four-mile range, I think. Uh, so uh, these Harriers attacked that base, they did great damage to it, killed about 80% 80, 80 of it or something like that, completely put it out of action. And they also had a quick pop at the SA-6 and a quick pop at this as well, I think. Uh, and they RTB'd, and all of them made it back, I think. Uh, one of them was on fire when they got back, but they made it back, so good work Harriers. <clears throat> Next is the seed flight, um, they all made the ferry, and we've got Ral, uh, uh, Dude, God, what's Dude's proper name? Um... Are having a moment. JD. Um, Whistler. No, not Whistler. Whistler's in uh, a uh, uh, eagle. Uh, Pap Shango and Seedor. Those four. Uh, they did uh, their job pretty much perfectly. They came in. They wiped out the SA6 site with KA58. Uh, any remaining radar sites and EWRs got taken out by... Oh, dear, I'm rusty. KH25s, maybe? I think. You guys know, probably know better than me. <clears throat> I just did their work around here, and then probably a few Vickers and stuff for taking out some ground units. Um, and Seathor and the SG-25 concentrated on the FOB here, did great damage. With, I didn't know what he was firing, KH-25s and Vickers maybe. Um, that and the A-10, Papashango, also worked on the FOB and did damage, mainly with Mavericks, I think. Okay, um, They lost, I think, one guy, uh, Seathor, took a... Um, what was it, Estrella SA-9 up the tailpipe. Uh, he struggled back to the base, but as he was on final, about to land, he lost hydraulic pressure, 
and had to bail just before the runway. So he was okay. He got, got back to the, the base at the end of the day. The others all survived, I believe. So pretty good job. I should make note at this point that the, the comms, as you probably noticed in the video, were, were chaotic. Lots of people talking over each other. Now, I'm not too worried about that. Um, the only reason that happened is because this was a very complicated mission with different flights doing different things. Um, usually when I design a, a normal mission that we do with a, s a single objective, um, we don't have the problem of talking over each other, but this was a complicated mission. So what we've said from now on in the briefing that we'll... Um, uh, really tighten up the comms when we do a big complex mission like that when you've got multiple ground attack groups plus multiple cap groups all operating um the last thing we want is uh the radio to be uh, put out of action by um by people talking over each other okay so we'll get that sorted um next group was trash and dove in the hueys um they almost met a nasty fate they flew they were flying to pick up the seal team here um, they passed the these guys here, the convoy and the FOB, and I think they got shot at by uh, these guys, the convoy, but they're okay. I didn't get much, much footage of them but for the video, but they got to the SEAL team, uh, picked up the SEAL team without getting shot, and RTB took them forever because they're running at 80 knots or something, and got back and did their job perfectly. So well done, choppers. You get a gold star. <clears throat> Now where it starts to get a bit messy is the cap. Um, I haven't done much 4th uh, 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 gen missile cap in the last um, few missions, the last five months or since before I got sick. So we're all rusty as hell and we're going to see lots of embarrassing flying, especially from me. Uh, but suck it up and um, we'll get back into the swing of it. We've got the first KH-58s going out there. Right, we're going to scroll forward because there's not a huge amount of uh, point of just watching missiles going into bases. Uh, SA-6 is going up there, uh, easily defeated by RAL and the other relatively experienced SA-25s, so that's an EWR out and probably a Cub Radar. Oh, um, I haven't talked about the cap flights. Yeah, the Hornets, uh, all four made it over the ferry because we were experienced pilots and took off and made it here. Uh, the F-15 flight lost one, I'm not sure who it was, but someone inexperienced in the F-15 crashed on landing, uh, forgot to put his flaps out. Um, or was, had got confused there so we lost an F-15 which is just unfortunate but as it turned out we just about made it anyway so we're okay <clears throat> do, 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 do. yeah okay it's 25 is going there pow 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 pow, pow. smashed smash that uh, FSB air defence good work there boys um uh, we had uh, AWACS out to sea here, helping us uh, immensely. Um, slow it down a little bit here. Uh, the guys are doing attacking the FOB now. We've got Papashango doing work. Right, hostiles have started scrambling now. We've got four times uh, flankers. Um, they'll be AI, probably set to the hardest skill level. Now, we don't usually fight AI. Um, the main reason is you can't. If you fight AI, you can't make a video of it afterwards, which is why the video looked a bit tat and had all kinds of problems. You know, it kept stopping and stuttering. That's when you start introducing AI aircraft, it causes problems with the replay track. Um, but we did because this mission, because we wanted to fight against some AI. Usually, we fight against human players, human red four. Uh, right. So um, we had some problems communicating because everyone talking over each other. Uh, but we managed to get cap and rage in a pair now these guys should uh, you should always go around in pairs basically so you've got cap and rage of hornet flight together and you've got chaos and rook in hornet flight together now notice we're not flying together in the pairs that's uh, so we can set up a chainsaw basically which completely didn't work at all because we're all rusty as hell uh, but here's a good example to explain what we mean so we would want to be heading into these hostiles me and rage would put out some missiles then turn back and basically run away at which point chaos and rook pair would come in the over overlap fire their missiles turn back around by which time captain rage would re-engage turn back in and you've got this infinite conveyor belt of missiles coming out from us and that's the safest way to operate um as a four ship or a two single flight or two singles basically um unfortunately i did fall apart we were struggling to comms and we were just cocked up basically uh, so that's that uh, f-15s i don't f-15s uh, are a bit all over the place i think graham's just out on his own you should always really go over the wingman if you can and other f-15 if you can see him is right back here i'm not sure why is right back there maybe he's setting up for a, a conveyor belt i'm not really sure uh it's a bit weird to be honest but i would have expected them to be together 
tail uh, doesn't follow anyone's rules, so he's just on his own with his little vegan mother looks at things. And that's it. Uh, if you wonder why the Harriers have started at this base again, um, uh, that's because they all lagged out uh, when they took off from this base here and just disappeared. Uh, and you're not allowed to respawn if you die, but if you lag out like that, uh, disconnect, then you are allowed to respawn. So you just ignore it, basically, and imagine it never happened. Okay. Uh, that's what I've got to say at the moment. So Hornets are in pretty good shape. F-15, not so much, but well, uh, let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Uh, these guys are um, these guys here are AI controlled aircraft controlled by the computer. They won't have any tactics. Basically, they're not programmed really to have tactics. They'll just fly at us and shoot at us um, with programmed whoops with programmed scripts. Uh, now here's the big problem. <clears throat> the overwhelming problem of this fight for the cap was our. Geographical situational awareness. Okay, we're dumping tanks there. That's something to note. Tanks are going out. Um, if I ever see anyone in combat with tanks, there we'll get a bollocking. You never be in combat with tanks. If you want to know why, I've made a video on this. Search in the YouTube search Grim Reapers why you should drop tanks. Uh, that will probably find it. Uh, or why should you drop fuel tanks? Uh, it's incredibly important to drop fuel tanks if you go into a fight. Otherwise, you're basically going to lose. Uh, simple as that. Okay, I'm sure we'll find out. I think Graham, I spotted him making the movie. He went into combat with three full fuel tanks. Immediately got wiped out. Silly, silly boy. Um, anyway, talking about geographical awareness. Uh, we, we're not, like I said, we're not really used to big missions like this with Sam's dotted all over the place. And to our detriment, um, we essentially chose to fight these flankers here over that. Now, that is an SA-10 in there somewhere. Yeah, SA-10. SA-10 has a massive range, 60 miles. Incredibly powerful. Uh, ground-based missiles and as soon as you try and fight over an SA-10 you're gonna lose and that's exactly what we did so it, a huge handicap on ourselves really stupid uh, but never mind what we should have done is held back waited for these guys to get closer and fought over the, the disabled SA-6 site that would have been the smart thing to do but we are the Reapers Whistler I think is turning into combat by the looks of it uh, so yeah, it looks like he's setting up a, a, a chainsaw with Graham probably. That is a bit extreme range. Good range here. This Hornet pair and this Hornet pair are about tw 10 to 20 miles apart. That's a good uh, initial engagement for a chainsaw. These guys are about 30 to 40 miles apart. That's a bit too far for my liking. You're going to struggle to get coverage on the overlap. Uh, or maybe Tail's going to help out a bit. Okay. Let's uh, okay. Flankers are Angels. Wow, 36. That's an interesting combat technique I usually mm, I say flying into combat is okay uh, uh, angel uh, above angels 20 but flying um, actually in combat firing missiles is actually a big detriment up there you can't get much lob on those missiles uh, physics just doesn't work like that it's not like throwing a stone um, being up high you don't really get them much further in fact it's a detriment to these guys because they can't avoid missiles uh, so luckily the AI is uh, helping us out by going high, although they're probably going to come down. First, SA-10s are out at a distance of 30 miles. See, the power of those missiles is immense. 30 miles. So we're like not even 30 miles from the planes already with missiles coming out threatening us. And as soon as you get that, it, it, it puts you off your stride, it puts your plan out of whack. And it causes problems, and it's what messed us up basically. Because throughout the whole fight, we had long range missiles coming at us. Uh, really confuses you. Uh, at this point, I'll start making my excuses as well. Uh, it's the first time I've flown an F 18 in combat for five months or so since before I got sick, and I couldn't fly for shoot. I couldn't even work out to fire my missiles, as you'll see. Uh, so, massive cock up. I need some Hornet practice. Um, so, Ray's just done the right thing. Um, hasn't. Um, taking any chances he's got the launch warning he's going to turn around now what he should do here is turn around head back 10 to 20 miles for the overlap i don't want to see him turning back into combat straight away that's a noob thing to do it will get you killed uh cap is also getting the launch warning i'm a bit more experienced though i knew it was an sa10 i knew i'd have about two mics before that missile got to me so i probably carried on for a bit graham's coming in as well with his three fuel tanks desperately trying to get a shot because he can't maneuver rage good split s there Probably put some big G in there, which is nice. Cap is... I thought I'd fired my missile there, which is pointless, really, because it's 20 miles anyway. Uh, but I, as you can see, I didn't, because I'm an idiot, and I couldn't work out how to press the trigger. Uh, at this point, I decided it was dangerous for this SA-10, which is correct. As you can see, it's getting dangerous now. And I'm out of there. Split S at this point. Cap is hollering on the, um, on the radio overlap. So that means Rage and Cap are going to head this way. Chaos and... 
Rook are going to uh, mill or, or should start burning now and hit us on the overlap. As it as we had it, it looks like Graham was actually on the overlap, but we are, weren't communicating with Eagle Team, so we didn't know about anything about Graham. Graham has done the right thing. He's got launched on by someone and he's turned cold. Uh, this is what I was saying about Whistler being too far back to give any overlap coverage. He's 40 miles back, um, so it's a little bit dangerous there, but he is after burning in by the looks of it. Now, yeah, so Rage has done the thing that I don't particularly like. He's gone back just kind of... He, he, he turned around here and he went back there. He went back two miles. Two miles isn't really enough. You can evade the missile by going two miles back, but it, it, you're not working as a team. You're not going back for your coverage. He should have come back. He should communicate with these guys, wait here till he passed these guys, then turn back in. So that's something important to learn. Don't just turn straight back into combat. You're putting yourself at massive detriment. You've got flankers bearing down you, bearing down supersonic flankers bearing down on, on you. Turning straight back into combat is going to leave you at a huge detriment. You won't have time to re-engage these flankers. So you should go all the way back. Use your team. That's what your team's here for. Once they've passed you, then turn back in to give them the coverage. Hopefully that's what you'll see of Cap, um, who's a little bit more experienced, but we shall see. Um, and it's all about communicating. Um, you don't really know where these guys are, but you can roughly tell by Chaos will be saying, OK, I'm so many miles from these hostiles. I know how far I am from these hostiles. I can work out when we're passing, roughly. OK. Um, so I expect we're going to see Rage getting himself in all kinds of trouble. And you can see there, he, he never really stood a chance. Because he didn't go back far enough, he didn't get time to re-engage these guys properly. And they're already lobbing missiles on him. And he's just going to now wear his energy all down, wear himself down. So he can kind of get his composure back now by going back. But he's probably not, he's probably just going to spin around in circles. Probably not fly very well. Uh, so we're going to see what happens here. As you see, what well, missiles being lobbed. Um, ERs from this dude here up at Angels 26. Uh, speed is wow yeah these guys are, so these guys have got mainly because of the SA-10 these guys have got a huge advantage they've got a wall of four and they're coming in 800 knots basically that, that's how you fly that's how you fire missiles at people and that's how you win um, by getting those big high energy shots in putting these guys on defensive and um, and so, so they're doing okay but they've got no tactic they're all coming in at once and that hopefully will be their downfall so what i want to see from rage now is burners on get out You've got to do that you you will die every time if you don't do that uh missile coming out for cap as well or maybe chaos i can't really tell i can tell that this is going to get chaotic um <clears throat> tail there's not much he can do really isn't a vigan in the in, with no radar in, in the middle of no man's land um tail the best thing the tail could do really is flank around the side here avoid missiles and pop up in the belly of these guys there's not much point of him being in a missile fight in the vegan okay uh, we do have an aim 120 hour it's not a kill shot it's a scare shot just to send one of these guys defensive just to take down their firepower and that's from chaos so that's fine he's got a little bit slow i don't like it he's obviously a young guy wax pulls back on that stick i don't like seeing 300 knots uh, at any time in combat Another missile whacking out there in the ER. Um, these AI are do, doing pretty well. They're sending their ERs out first just to scare us and shake us up, put us defensive, burn our speed down, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so they're doing pretty well so far, actually. Okay. Now, look, here's a good thing to learn. Um, I hate to shy my own trumpet, but it's, it's something we all have to learn. See, Cap, he's gone back. I've gone back 10 miles and I've waited, I've communicated with Chaos and Rook, I've waited till they've passed me and then I turn around. That's the only safe way to do team combat. Now that these guys have passed me and they're covering, it is now safe for me to recommit. I then say, guys, I'm recommitting to the fight, turning hot. They know then that Rook and Chaos can turn around. So you see, as soon as I'm turning back in and, and communicating with them, these guys can turn back around. And we've got this chain interaction going. And all we're going to do is these guys are just going to fire missiles. They won't be able to kill us like this and they'll just burn their fuel down and burning someone's fuel or missiles down is just as good as killing them essentially essentially it puts them out of the fight but it puts you in less danger so this is how you should be doing it graham's turned around he doesn't really seem to be a part of this fight to be honest he's gone north and doing whatever graham does uh but the hall is doing okay so far now rage i want to see him go back and he hasn't he's he's done it again no he's no he's i'm not sure what he's doing he's flying down into no man's land We'll pick it oh, there. He just turned back in hot again. He's done it again. See, uh, yet again. So he's turned around, gone two miles back and recommitted. And he will die because of this. You cannot survive in a missile fight if you just keep turning around. All he's doing is essentially spinning around in circles. And every time he gets to recommit, he hasn't got enough time to, to get radar lock and, and, and get situational awareness. He's going to get... He's basically a turkey. Can't fight like that. It's not team combat. 
Uh, Chaos is going uh, evasive. He's got a missile shot at him. An ET this time. Good job for avoiding the ET. It doesn't give a warning. He's seen it, obviously. Putting his flares out, and he probably will beat that missile. Uh, he hasn't got to worry, because he's totally, He's going to turn back. Cap's going to come and cover him. Cap's going to, you know, he, he put his life in my hands, and that's what you've got to do as a team player. Okay. Um, let's see. Got a missile coming out. And that's raised down, and exactly what we thought was going to happen. He just couldn't get he's trying the best he can do by doing this spinning around the circle is, is get himself into a dogfight and that's a bad thing to aim for dogfight you never want to be in a dogfight that's the worst case scenario okay um and the worst case is you just get shot which is what's likely to get happen you we've got a battlefield full of missiles let me just check i am recording we've got a battlefield full of missiles here you can't do that you've got to go in out i drum it into everyone in out in out i will make them listen to me um anyway so Ray just got taken down why is that not working? I hate it when it doesn't work. Um, yeah, j uh, it, it, and it wasn't even a good shot from a hostile. It was just a random shot from some guy miles away. But that's all it needs. If you've not, he hasn't got a situational awareness. He, he's no way he could have seen that missile coming because he didn't have a big run in like Cap. Look at Cap's big run in. I get time, situational awareness. And it's taken out. He did fire a missile at someone. I want to hit someone. I didn't know. But again, he was essentially in a dogfight there. It's not where you want to be. It's not team play. Okay, Graham's got himself in trouble. Um, I don't really know what Graham's doing. It's just on his own, really. A good th at least I did see he went back 10 miles. That was good. It wasn't probably... Let me see how fast he was going. In an eagle, you do everything binary. One and zero. Fast or nothing. And he's going 700 knots. Graham was doing all right. And he's turned back in. He's recommitted... But by the time he's recommitted, he's got a missile out on him. That's fine. So he's got to dodge now. No, it's not going for Graham. Okay. So I'd expect to see Graham see this guy easily with his powerful radar. And Graham should mop this guy up. Um, so he's part of the coverage flight by the looks of it. Okay. I've got an more 20 going for this guy. This guy's going to dodge it easily. Uh, AI, they're pretty good at dodging missiles at long range. Uh, this guy's dodging. One guy's down. Rook's having a moment. No, that's not how you dodge a missile, is it? So Rook's uh, coming back in. I've no idea where he's gone vertical up here, but he has. It's a bad thing to do. You don't want to be up there. Lobbing missiles is a faux pas. It's a, it's a, it's a lie. You don't lob missiles. It's just The physics just don't work. Being up at Angel's 30 really doesn't help. And uh, he's got plenty of warning uh, that this ER's coming out, I think. Um, and he should now split S, turn away, wait for his coverage, which was going to be, well, Graham this time. Should be Cap. Cap's coming at completely the wrong angle. Stupid. And I'm coming in too slow. Bad flying. I did fly off all the... Uh, so I'd like to see Root split S, run away, wait for coverage. And I think he's just... Oh, he's down at 300 knots. That's no good. It's because it's he's gone up. He's burnt all his energy. He's gone up. He's just he's put himself out of the fight by going up. Because he's burnt all his energy off. He's now a sickened duck. And he can still get any potential energy back and dive out. But I just I think he makes a pig's ear. Look, he's spinning around the wrong way. He's turned into the missile. Turned into the missile. There's a good chance that also going up there, you put your weird your aircraft at a weird attitude, weird angle, and your EW, uh, EWR, your RWR won't work. It won't pick up missiles fire be fired laterally. So he put himself out of the fight by just going vertical and doing humpback for no reason. None of that should have been done. It was all bad. S just stay low. If you're low, because um, so, he would have been low coming off the, the original split S, that's fine. Stay low. Low's okay. You don't need to be up there. It, it makes you a sitting duck, especially in a fight. <laughs> Okay, um, so that was that was just bad flying. There's nothing else to say about that. Uh, Graham, I don't know what he's doing, but he should have seen this guy and killed him a while ago. He's flying in, oh, doing everything wrong. Flying in slowly on mill power with full bags up high. And not firing. And rightfully gets uh, R73 in the face. So that was just bad flying. Right, um... So all mistakes. It's lovely to see nice, big, obvious mistakes like this. Um, it but just makes it really easy to to analyse. Whistler's going up high. I no idea why it's doing. Uh, he's, he's flying slow and up high, so he's, he's not part of the fight really. I think he's just lost his awareness. He's forty miles out of the fight still. He should be in here covering us, taking out bad guys. Uh, Cap and this guy haven't spotted each other. They're just basically spinning around each other. I'm scanning this area looking for hostiles, trying to find hostiles. Chaos doing the same thing. Uh, what we don't want to do is go any further in and get suckered into the Sams. And we're doing a good job at that. 
Um, these two guys have run away. See, look, the AI knows how to do it. They run away a good 20, 30 miles, then turn back in. Why can't my human guys do that? Uh, right. Something's sort of smashed there. I think that was just Graham. Tail. Flying man, not really doing anything, but he's not really got a suitable jet for this. What the fuck is Whistler doing? Oh! Where did these little monkeys come from? Well, I say that, it was completely luck that Whistler put himself in the wrong place completely because a, a flight of warbirds was spawned. I didn't even know this happened. Um, if those warbirds had got through, they would have wiped out those helicopters, wiped out those harriers. They're, they're devilishly powerful in a against ground attack, these warbirds. I don't underestimate them. And so it, it's hugely beneficial that Whistler was out of... He was out of, um, out of the fight. So maybe it was Whistler's plan all along. He was going to stay back and protect these guys. That's... Um, uh, good mature thinking, if that's true, because he just took all these guys out. I didn't know that happened. That is good. I like that. Right, anyway, um... Chaos has fired a missile at this guy, and because his AI player is doing exactly what he needs to, he's going back, turning back, um... Upwards, he did an inverted split S. That's weird. And he got shot. Uh, yeah, so... Massive thing to learn here. Come on, get that missile out, sir. When you when you turn away from a missile, you always go down. If you can't go down because you're on the ground, go lateral. You never go up. All it does is burn your energy off, and you can see it's already a speed's completely gone, and you're a sitting duck. You see chaos. He goes sideways, and he should go down. I mean, chaos has been naughty there. He shouldn't do a ninety degree turn. And try and um, you shouldn't do a 90 degree turn. And try and notch it. You should turn away and let your teammate cover you. That's the difference between individual greedy playing and team playing. Team playing is everything. It's part of being in the Reapers. Turn around. Call for coverage. Notching. Notching has worked for him this time. I'll give him that. Only because he's turned away though. That would have hit him otherwise. Uh, anyway, um, he did a vertical. This had a vertical split S and died because of it. And rightly so. You can't do an inverted split S. It burns all your energy off. And you dared. Okay, uh, Cap's found someone. It's ER out. It's going for Cap. I'm going to die. No, I don't die. Oh, Cap's lucky. It's gone for Tail. Thump. Okay, uh, there's not much Tail can do about that. He's in an old third gen jet. So not anything to talk about there. Cap merges. And it's probably going to do really badly. I've got a good 8G there. That's a good pull. Why is that not working? Uh, and Cap's got the energy here and coming in for above. Uh, this should be Cap's fight, really. Beautiful turn. Up to 9G there, or just short off. Straight on that, this guy's 6. He's an AI player, so he's never going to do particularly well. And I'm probably sitting here going, trying to fire my missiles. Can't work out which button fires the missiles in the Hornet. And doing nothing, like a retard. Uh, the form is good, though. I'm slightly ahead of him uh, in speed. My attitude is... Oh, my God. An ET went out for chaos. I didn't know that happened. Okay, this guy's going tight now. And I've taken lead. So I've done a bad thing here. What I've done is I've cut the corner. You see, I've cut the corner and taken the lead on him. Um, shouldn't do that. Oh, and I've had to pop it in with guns. That's why I did it. The thing is, if you take lead like that, especially if you're going fast, and I'm going 509 knots, it means I'm going to have to put a wanging great turn in here to slow down. And it gives this chance guy a chance to actually outbreak me and get on my six. So it was a risky thing. Taking lead like that in an, in an aggressive uh, 90 degree merge there is always dangerous. And so what I'm going to have to do is a big looping turn and hope this guy doesn't take advantage of me. And he hasn't. In fact, he's tried to exit the fight. He's seen what I've cocked up and he's going to exit the fight. And for some reason he's going really slow and burning all his energy off. That's just because it's an AI, not a human, basically. I probably would have lost this fight against a human because I've made a mistake. Um, so I couldn't work out to fire the missiles, so I think I've got the guns working. I've got the guns working, this easy kill, obviously. Uh, so, it's not really much good there, to be honest. Right. And that's that fight done. The Chaos must have killed the other flanker. Loose flanker, wherever it was, I didn't see it, but okay, that's good. Um, summary of that fight. Chaos and Cap survived because we were doing the best missile evasion and team tactics. We were doing the the big pullbacks when we had to and survive. Um, 
That's, that's the best I've got with that. Uh, Whistler's probably staying back here and defending the fleet, I imagine. Yeah, you see, he's gone back there, so it looks like his job was really defending the fleet. Um, on retrospect, pretty good idea, in case someone snuck through like they did. Okay, um, let's see what happens. These guys can obviously continue doing their mission. Um, me and Chaos link up. And yeah, you can see we get AWACS report, we've got these 23s coming in. Uh, should be easy pickings for us. 23s for a Hornet, should be no match at all. Um, and you can see we've got a 10 mile split again, so we can get over that going. So what I want to see is Chaos not being greedy. I want to see him heading in, firing missiles, turning out, letting Cap come in on the overlap for a kill. That's team play, that's how it should be done. So let's get working here. Chaos is taking some AAA, that's quite funny. Gumbo's coming in to help, which is a bit weird, but okay. Uh, so, pion, 21 miles. There's no point of firing missiles at, uh, yeah, it's just silly, it's just silly flying, that is. Um, firing missiles at 20 miles, you can't really kill a baddie at 20 miles, uh, because they're just going to get the warning and dodge. Um, so it's only useful for putting, uh, hostiles defensive. No, it's only useful for putting hostiles defensive if they're a danger. MiG 23s, we know, are not a danger. They can only kill us in, essentially in close combat. So, f so putting them co cold is only going to be a detriment to you and a waste of missiles. Basically, that's something to learn. Uh, if you're fighting easy planes like this, closer to 10 miles, get a kill shot, turn back. And again, you don't really even you don't want to get in a dogfight with them, even though these are probably crap dogfighters compared to a Hornet. Y you don't want to put your airframe in danger in a dogfight. There's no need for it. You've got AMRAMs. You can easily shoot them there. You see, they've easily dodged. So he's going to get suckered into them by the looks of it now. And he didn't need to do that. If he hadn't fired his warning shot, he could have shot at 8 miles, killed them both. And um, we could have gone home for supper. Luckily, only two came out. The other two peers have not taken off. Yeah, they are. They've, they've bugged and not taken off. Suits us just fine. Uh, now you can see we're getting suckered into the SA-10, which I think killed us both. What the hell is Captain... Oh, it's Gumbo. Oh, they're sidearms at that. It's, okay, it's fine sidearms or something. That's fine. Uh, okay, these floggers are doing exactly what they should do. They're sucking us into the SA-10. That's good flying. Completely pointless missile, I think, here uh, from Chaos. That's a 10-mile missile on the ass of a fast jet, although it's actually going quite slow. But still, technically, that missile shouldn't reach unless this guy turns into it. Uh, again, this is a uh, pointless missile. It's going to go evasive, and that missile's burnt already. Look, you need, I say, four miles for an AIM-120C. It's your maximum to kill something that's running, running away from you. Anything else is just a scare him, of which there's no point of doing here. And um, just wasting missiles, basically. You see this guy's got a good evasive, got his 22-degree S's on here. Uh, be be beating missiles easily. What you should do is put his wings back and fly away after burner. But he is an AI, so he doesn't have a brain, so he can't do that. Cap's still coming on the 10-mile overlap. Chaos is burning now. Uh, it's a bit boyish to burn after one, but okay. Uh, missile was out of bounds as well. That was seven miles, but luckily this guy's an AI and he's just going to turn straight into it, I think. Stupid. AI dead. Okay, so he's got him at the end of the day. And SA-10 is now going up for him. And yeah, there's I mean, not much you can do when you're six miles from an SA-10 site and it's firing at you. You're dead meat, basically. And Cap, stupid, run into exactly the same problem here. Let's just roll that forward a bit. Okay, let's see when Cap firing. It's a head on. Uh, that's a bit ambitious as well. Even 10 miles on a low down target is ambitious. I know where Angel's 10. So we're actually in relatively thin air. Eight miles would have been a kill shot. I should have waited to eight miles already, but I am a noob in a Hornet. Oh, look at that. Good dodge, sir. Fair play. And then that was a four and a half mile shot. That should have been a kill, but great a great maneuvering by this dude. Really taking, sucking those missiles in. Doesn't really have much of a right to be alive at this point. As an aim line, X of two miles. There's very little you can do to dodge that. And he's dodged it. Well done. And, oh yeah, I can work out to find my missiles now, by the way. And we have a merge. And let's look at the speeds. 400 knots versus 550 knots. A cap is coming low below. It's probably Cap's fight. This guy goes high. One thing you don't ever do in a dogfight, unless it's to loop over quickly, um, is just fly high. It's stupid. 
and I've done a loop of scrubbing off my speed and turning as tightly as I can. What's my G? G is low. I'm um, down here. Yeah. I think I didn't really see much danger, so I didn't need to pull that hard. SA10 is coming out for cap. Whoops. I'm a silly man, and I'm dead. I should never have been there in the first place. And thump. Oh, it didn't kill him, look. Whoops. Uh, so we all died. Um, technically, we did our job. We uh, killed all the fighters, which is pretty good. Uh, but uh, really, that was pretty much awful flying all round there. Um, no one really did much right, apart from a little bit of chainsaw at the beginning. So lots to learn. We need to start getting practice with um, our team air to air again. Ground attackers, great job. Nothing really to say about, bad about the ground attack. Uh, great mission. Right, hope you enjoyed that. And I'll see you for the next mission.